Some of you just got in. <laughs> well, what are some of the takeaways from that? Uh, the, the vidya, the rest of the group. Yes. What was that thing he was holding when they were checking it to the plane? Oh, true, uh, tachometer, handheld tachometer. Yeah. I've never seen that one. I know we have some of the tool room. One of them is an optical where it just counts the flashes. And we have another one where you hold it and you hit a thing and it vibrates. And so, I've never used one of those, but somehow you got to keep like hitting it and it vibrates and tells you. We got to try that, but kind of weird. I thought it was interesting that you removed the zerk fittings with the grease in the top. I guess it still would come out on the other side. Well, yeah, otherwise you're blowing it out the seals. Yeah. Uh, so. Now, I think that's one of the biggest takeaways I was hoping you'd get is when you grease the prop that, number one, you have to remove half of the Zerg fittings, trailing edge, if I'm not mistaken, right? And then you don't, the thing I didn't like is they said, put, put either one ounce of grease in or until it comes out. Yeah. And they never specified whichever comes first. Yeah. Uh, so I know that a lot of mechanics out there will interpret that too. I have a choice. Just shove it. In. I and I have decided I will take choice B and shove it in until it comes out nice and clean. Nope. So. More better. Yeah. More yeah. Better. yeah. One of the seminars I went to, I think it was Sullivan Prop. They, they do a really good job of their seminars and stuff. They were talking about how um, the prop is only designed for so much grease, and that when you overfill it, it really needs to be taken apart and resealed. Um, what else was there? Uh, well, I had a question. Whenever he did the... <coughs> I'm not taking questions right now. Would you? Go ahead. Whenever he was doing the, the balancing, he took the spinner off. Can he just leave the spinner off and do the balancing and then the spinner back on? Ooh, very good. No. <laughs> and the reason why, there's, there's several. Number one, you're balancing the spinner too. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, number two, probably more importantly, is there are brackets that are sticking out, like the props going this way. There are brackets sticking out this way. The centrifugal force is going to bend them out. Ooh. So the spinner holds things in place. So otherwise you get brackets all over. And those bulkheads are stupid expensive. I mean, just, are you freaking kidding me expensive? How much? Thousands. Yeah. No. In the Hartzell man manual that I found, it said every 400 hours or 12 months, so a year. Now, in there, it says every 100 hours or... Yeah, the thing that I'm getting from Hartzell, from doing this class and the manuals, is they have changed it a lot over the years. So, I would <laughs> want the... And, and the other thing is, getting Hartzell manuals or prop manuals is not necessarily easy. They don't yeah. like to give them up. That's why they say keep them. That's the that's owner's manual. manual. So, yeah, that's why you have to have a relationship with your prop shop and you call them up and you say, hey, what, you know, what, what are we using today? How much are we doing it? How much do I put in? And all that. And, uh, yeah, when you dress the blades, you're supposed to then, of course, measure the cord and put some aladine on it and then repaint it. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, that's kind of all I got out of it. Anything else? Uh, you mentioned something about sudden vibration. Oh yeah, you're flying along and all of a sudden it starts vibrating. Oh, yeah. yeah, is that what does that mean? Like, Something has come loose. Okay. Yeah, and they and he showed a bunch of examples. You know, a piece of the prop fell off. Something internal broke. Um, a blade is no now a blade is loose in the hub or something. Okay. Yeah. 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 So Kevin, in the video, he did dress the prop on the on one blade. Yeah. And then he put aladine on it, and I believe he painted it because by the time the customer got there, it looked like a new prop again. Yeah. So would he paint both blades to keep the weight the same, or is it just a little mist that doesn't really matter? Just put it on one side and you're good. It's interesting. Huh? I know. Yeah. Um, so I take, it's, it's, it's one. It's, to me, it depends on what I'm doing. Yeah. And it depends on the condition of the prop. Okay. So looking at the pictures of that prop that he brought in, it already needed paint on both sides, so I would have painted both sides. If I'm dressing out a really small nick on my prop, honestly, you saw, I don't even, a little tiny one, I don't even paint it because the environment is so bad. Plus, if I'm going to go flying, well, yeah. the paint slides off. Oh. So, <laughs> so... 
I'll wait until I come back and then tape off the aircraft or the cowling comes off and then I'll sand the whole prop and do, do a whole yeah. nicer job. So, it kind of depends on what, what needs to be done. But if it's a nice prop, doesn't need paint, but has one little nick, I would just blend that out and paint it. Cause, and then put a lot of paint on because that one's not lighter. Yeah. Right? So. Yeah. <laughs> and always use a thick nap roller because, just, just kidding, it's very spray can. And I told you about paint. The, the paint that I believe, and you didn't say it, but it's uh, the approved paint. I think a lot of it was Sherman Williams, was, was believe it or not. But yeah, but you can get like Tempo Mix um, prop paint, epoxy, propeller epoxy paint. They make, make it in. Uh, satin black and uh, Hartzell gray, and and that's an epoxy, and it sucks because it never seems to come out of the can worth a darn. You don't get flicker from flicker vertigo from the. Gray. I guess it's flat. It must be no, because you paint the face black. Oh. So yeah, you couldn't so, see that. The other side of that one's black. Okay. Uh, let's see. We got that. Um. I'll go with this. Built on honor. 30 more minutes. Oh. Look at all the slides we have to go through still. Holy crap. I know. I can learn a lot. Hydromatic. I remember that. Remember that? Uh -huh. Okay. So, in this, is this a feathering or non feathering prop? Non feathering. How do you know? Doesn't have counterweights, and it's a short. And this is short. But up here on the front, you have this this uh, air fitting that is not an air fitting. That's the low pitch stop. So you have a jam nut, and you have uh, it's usually a shaft that takes an Allen head, and uh, that's not really for you to play with. Although I know some mechanics who do. They're like, yeah, low pitch stop is off. They just get in there and adjust it. I'm like, hmm, I don't know about that. You're not allowed to touch it at all. Mm. Interesting. Don't even look at it. Don't even Don't, you don't, yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, this one's definitely a feathering because A, that is very long. And two, it's got the counterweights. Um, got a big spring. And what, what I wanted to do with this one as I was looking at, I think we'll get into it a little bit, was if it had an air charge. And it doesn't look like it does. Because the, spin, the propellers that take an air charge has a split right here, and you take the front spinner. It's only about that big. There's a little oh. cap, and you take the cap off. That's convenient. Yeah, it really is. All right, let me see. Did that. Talk a little bit about that. That one. It looks like it has an air charge on it. Yeah, we'll get to that. Yeah, this, that is it. Now it's a Schrader valve. So it takes an air charge in there. Mm -hmm. Right there. Yeah, it's not a very clear one because I pulled it out of a Hartzell thing. But there's an air charge, and you can see this spinner comes off right here. And then inside of there, there's a sticker. We'll get to this, I think, in a few minutes. That tells you, uh, you have to do a temperature correction chart, and it tells you what, um, temp what pressure that's supposed to be. All right, so we talked about now the Hartzell steel hub non feathering. For those non feathering, does that have counterweights? No. no. What moves the prop to low pitch? Same with the Hartzell compact. There's no different. Moves prop to high pitch, oil pressure, oil pressure. So it's all the same. So um, under speed drains oil to decrease pitch and, oops, one of these has got to be wrong. No, that's all right. That's this way, this way. Then over speed, then under speed, and over speed. Same, same. Mm -hmm. All right. What are we talk about now? Must be going to talk about an accumulator and feathering mechanisms, it looks like. All right, so feathering props.
Feathering propellers. Well, what's the purpose? So they can make more money. All right, multi-engine aircraft require feathering props to reduce drag should the aircraft lose that engine. Multi-engine. Multi-engine aircraft uh, require feathering. Props to reduce drag should the aircraft lose that engine. Should, should the aircraft have an engine failure. Mr. CFI in the back corner over there. I read an article recently that said if you're in a single engine aircraft and you lose the engine, you should reach over and pull the propeller into high pitch. So you have a greater distance. Buying that? Made sense. Heard that too, but yeah, it was kind of like, well, you can't feather it, but do the best you can. So, so then the engine would turn. Slower. Yeah, I was gonna say. Yeah, it's not gonna fight. Turn slow. It was less resistant. Slower. 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 That's oh, why yeah, I was yeah. shaking. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's fine pitch. It's not going Course to pitch. Spin it as fast. Yeah. No. Anyway, that's. Yeah. Uh. So feathering a prop, feathering a prop means to rotate, rotate the propeller about 90 degrees, which is blade directly into uh, wind, I don't know if that's the right thing to say, um, in order to stop the engine from windmilling. In order to stop the engine from windmilling. Also to just reduce drag, I can put that too, and reduce drag. Yeah. If you I say that? Able yeah, I did that already. If you aren't able to feather the prop and let's say again, like you lose your engine in a single single uh, engine aircraft, okay. would it windmill? Mm -hmm. Or so the higher the higher blade angle would let you go farther. It would reduce the drag in theory. Okay. So it would increase your glide distance. But you can stop the propeller. Have you ever tried that? Tried to, to stop it just by slowing down? Again. Yeah. I sure as hell would never try it. I don't <laughs> want to. <laughs> I'm not shutting my engine down in flight. Not in a, not in a single engine. <laughs> yeah, I guess you would. So, yeah. So, if you lose your engine and it windmills, your engine is spinning. Hmm? Yeah. No matter how broken it is. Yes. But I have read of people who get into a situation where they have to stop it. Like you've, part of your spinner broke off, you yeah. lost part of a propeller tip, that going around is shaking the hell out of it. So you shut off your engine, pull back on the yoke, go into a stall, so there's no wind basically at all, then that stops the propeller from moving, recover from the stall, and I guess if you don't increase your speed, keep it a low speed, that it won't start the prop windmilling. God, that would be fucking scary. Oh yeah, I can't imagine. <laughs> I couldn't. I couldn't imagine. The poo would come out. I mean, all over. Oh. <laughs> I'd be ruining the upholstery along with the front of the air. Sure. I can't even imagine. Okay. Wait, is that technically more desirable? Well, if you're, you're in a position where it's shaking so bad that you're going to either lose the engine off the front and start backing up, yeah, well, I'm going to give it a shot. Yeah, that's the tool I got. But otherwise... No, if I'm if I'm 
flying along and suddenly I, I lose engine power, but it's smooth. I want that thing windmilling because I, you know, if I'm going to fly it, but I'm going to keep trying everything. You know, I'm mixture back and forth, mags back and forth, carb heat. I just keep going, man. I, you know. <laughs> you know what's funny though is you can probably comment is you know listening to like the, you know there was podcasts and stuff uh richard mcspadden who i yeah well like it's a really cool dude um got a lot of respect for him and he's a good interviewer talks about how a partial engine failure is worse than a full engine failure on that 251 yeah because you just don't know. It's like you, you start thinking, okay, I can make it. No, now I can't. I can. That's where you have a total failure. You're like, okay, that's where I'm going to land, and you go and land, and you otherwise. I don't know. I don't want either. So if you, I get a choice, you start, you start thinking that. Yeah, I could, that I could make it. I could make it. Dies. Yeah. And then it doesn't make it. Um. So <clears> very <throat> few. Single engine. Aircraft have feathering props. I had read one thing that said really the only ones that had it were a few turbo prop crop dusters, but then it got me thinking. Probably most turbo prop single engines have that. If not all. If not all, because I will, you're going to shut down the. Uh, with that N1 or N2? You shut down N2, which you would then lose oil pressure to N1 and, or, reverse that. That'd be T2 going to. N2 is your, <laughs> yeah, yeah. N2 it would be the problem. Yep, so you got to shut that down. Huh? huh? We're back at turbines? Yeah. Yes, we're back at turbines. So I gotta Everything get is interconnected. Yes, it is interconnected. Oh and, and what they are doing down at the other end, because they've kind of completed the lecture and they're, you know, getting ready to graduate, is they're doing Q&As. And so they're going around the class and, you know, he starts with a Q&A and Phil said last night, not a single person could remember anything about piston engines. <laughs> <laughs> he started with, what is this, I guess, what is the cycle referred to for a piston engine? Auto That's turbines. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Good. Let's make sure you guys know that. <laughs> All right. Auto cycle. That's a motorcycle. No. Auto. Auto. Note that in the event of an engine failure, event of an engine failure. Single engine aircraft, what causes the air, the propeller to go to high pitch towards feather? In a single engine? Single oil engine. Pressure. Oil pressure. So we can't have that, right? I mean, you know where I'm going with that. Oil, yeah. Because if you lose an engine, you lose oil pressure, you got nothing. It's gonna get, it would go this way, so you got to reverse everything. So an engine failure or loss of oil pressure. Uh, the prop needs to feather. Needs to feather without Without oil from the governor, right? So I had to design it backwards. Mm -hmm. Oh, we'll start by talking about the Macaulay, but I guess it's break time, huh? Yes. Well,